Humpty Dumpty had a great bash, and Humpty Dumpty was left with no cash. All the professionals and all the craftsmen couldn't put Humpty together again. No cash or not enough cash is the common situation that most people are facing in today's times. And that means disruption of the dreams and hopes of the financial aspirations, especially if they have not taken charge of their finances. So like Humpty Dumpty, if one person were to have blown up all their cash, what do they do now? Where do they start? So let's together explore what the finance of wallet romance so that you can write the future of your financial situation and have a wallet that's large enough to accommodate all your financial dreams, hopes and aspirations. Where does one start? Let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. When you read, you begin with A, B, C, A, B, C. When you save, you begin with three little steps, three little steps. Yes, I'm going to share with you three simple, easy little steps that you could follow so that you can start on your financial journey. So the step one, what I would recommend is, especially if you want to get into the habit of financial discipline and financial saving, start with your financial goals. What are the financial goals that you have? And how can you go about setting your financial goals? Let me give you an acronym here. The acronym is TOM, T-O-M, TOM where T stands for the time frame. What sort of time frame are you looking at? What is it that you want to achieve financially in the short term, then in the medium term, and then in the long term? So state your goals in relation with the term. So the T stands for the time period or the term that you want to achieve. O stands for the objectives. What is it that you want to achieve? It's probably you may want to have uh, a large number of assets or you may want to have you know, enough savings for future education or retirement and, and so on. So what are the objectives of your financial goals? M stands for measure. So measure and quantify the progress you know, in relation with the time frame that you have and the objectives that you've set for yourself. Then comes your step number two. Step number two is to draw up a cash budget of your monthly cash in and cash out. So make a note of all the money in that you're expecting in a month and then all the money out that you're expecting in the same month. So your money out could probably be like your groceries, your rental, your transportation costs and so on. So the difference between the money in and the money out will leave you with a surplus or a deficit. So your step three is to evaluate your surplus or deficit. Of course, if it's a deficit, you need to see how you can make it a surplus. And if it is a surplus, is it in line with what you want? Or let's say you are right now having a surplus of say, 20% and you want to make it to a 25%. So what do you do? So put your income and then put what the amount that you want to save next and the balance for your expenses or the money out. So you basically rework on the expenses so that you first ensure that you're making the saving and then you are able to manage the expenses within the amount that you have at your disposal. As a bonus tip, let me share another little thing here with you. The topic is romance with your wallet, right? So if you need to have romance, you need to have a relationship. What is your relationship with money? What are your underlying beliefs 
on money. I would urge you to take a pause and reflect on these and set right the relation that you have with money. Do you think money is good for you? Is money helping you in your growth and development? Or are you averse to the fact of having a lot of money? Think through that and see that you have the right sort of relation that you want with money. So now that you have good financial awareness, let me take you through three money management principles. The first one is going to be the forest principle and then the principle of essentialism and the third is going to be the bucketing principle. So let's start off with the forest principle. When you think of a forest, what comes to your mind? You're probably thinking and looking at large trees, a wide variety of trees that's vast and dense. Your revenue or the money in, the money that you make should be the same way, wherein you are able to have different and multiple sources of revenue. So how is it that you can upskill yourself, you know, get the value that you want? So think different and see how you can leverage on the strengths that you have so that you have different and multiple sources of revenue for yourself. The second principle is the principle of essentialism. You could use this, especially when you're tight for cash. So classify all your expenses as essential, highly essential, and non-essential. Of course, the highly essential is a no-brainer that you require for your day-to-day -day living. And the non-essential ones are the ones you know that you can do away with. But the gray area is the one that comes under the category of essential expenses. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're grown out grocery shopping. You see some extra knickknacks, some snacks, a bottle of juice, and you want to have these. But then are they highly essential or not essential? So on what basis can you classify? Of course, because it's also not good to deprive yourself of the things that you want to have. So let me give you an easy way out. What you could do, especially for the ones that you are now classifying as the essential ones, could be the fact that you are able to set yourself some limits. And how do you set these limits? For example, it can be a fixed amount each month or it can be a percentage of the amount that you're earning. So you could set yourself limits in such a way that you do not exceed either the percentage that you're fixing or the fixed amount that you're fixing. So therefore, if you have some extra, you know, that gives you the leeway to play around with things that you would like to indulge yourself in. So see how you can apply the principle of essentialism in your walk of life. The next principle I'm going to talk to you about is the bucketing principle. And this can be helpful in making the financial decisions when it comes to your cash outflow. So classify all your expenses into two buckets. One is the non-negotiable bucket and the second is the negotiable bucket. Now under each of these, I'm going to share with you five different buckets that you can play around with. Let's start off with a non-negotiable budget. The first bucket here is called the non-compromise bucket. So this, the expenses that come under this could be like, you know, where you want to invest on your self-development, your self-care, or it could even be like a medical expenses wherein you will not want to compromise on it or you cannot negotiate on it. So those come under the non-compromise bucket. The next bucket is the sentimental bucket, wherein you're driven by your sentiments. Let's say it's your mother's milestone birthday and you would definitely want to get her something. So things like this would come under the sentimental bucket. The third one under this category is the investment bucket, wherein you may have your monthly systematic investment plan or you know your monthly EMIs, so on and so forth, which will come under your investment bucket. The fourth bucket is the returns bucket. Returns bucket is 
something like the return on investment and I call it the return on expense bucket. So these are some things that give you high value in turn of you spending the amount. For example, it can be on a book that's worthwhile or it can be an online course on your domain wherein your value is enhanced by incurring these expenses or the money outflow on these types of examples that I gave you. The last one under the non-negotiable bucket is the timing bucket. In the timing bucket, you know, things that come under like, you know, school fees, for example, which you have to pay on time, or it could be the income tax, so on and so forth, that you have to pay within the specified time. So these come under the non-negotiable bucket. Now let's look at what are the buckets that come under the negotiable bucket? The first one here, I would call it the compromise bucket, wherein you are ready to compromise on that extra spend. For example, you probably may not need that extra pair of shoes that you have. So things that you can easily compromise upon. The next bucket under this is called the extravagant bucket, wherein, you know, let's say, you want to buy yourself a watch. So does it have to be the high-end top luxury brand or can it be another brand? So depending on the amount of cash you have and how you want to indulge yourself, take a call on the extravagant amount that you want to spend on the luxuries. The third bucket here is the cheat bucket. You know, during the start of the year, for example, you are so keen and you pay up the monthly, you know, the yearly gym subscription. But you know deep down that you probably may not continue after the initial two to three months. So what are you cheating yourself about? Think through that. Or it could also be when you're going shopping, buy two and get the third one free, but your requirement is actually just the one. So think and reflect on this before you indulge yourself. The fourth bucket under this is called the alternate bucket. What are the alternatives to the spend that you're evaluating? Are there, you know, more cost-effective options? Is there scope for further negotiations? Check them out. And the last one here is the delay bucket. Is it possible for you to delay that particular expense even further, especially when you're tempted to buy, you know, online or you know even when you go out shopping is there a way that you can actually delay yourself and you know probably reward yourself at the end of when you're achieving something so think through these and take the right and wise financial decisions before you incur any spend or you know having a cash outflow next i would also like to touch upon an easy way for you to evaluate the risks while making any financial decision. Let me give you an acronym here again. The acronym is RISK, RISK for RISK. R stands for the rewards. So by doing a particular financial decision, what is the reward that you're going to get? Risk and reward go hand in hand. So see what is the reward that you'll get in turn. I stands for the investment required. Now, while making a financial decision, what is the amount of investment that's needed from your side? Are you financially geared for it? Do you have the money or do you will have to go and, you know, take a loan, so on and so forth? So, evaluate the investment that's required. S stands for segregation. Segregating the pros and cons of the financial decision that you are considering. Evaluate it thoroughly. K stands for knowingness. By knowingness, I mean, you know, get to know every aspect of the financial decision that you're making. Like, for example, if you're going in for the loan on the investment required, what is the cost, the interest cost that you're incurring? What is the industry trend? What is the time period? What is the time frame that you're looking at, right, for this investment to grow and mature, so on and so forth. So see what sort of things that you need to do before you take this right financial decision. So knowing it from end to end. So let me repeat the risk. R is rewards. I is investment required. S is segregation of the pros and cons. And K is the knowingness. 
So get into the discipline of thinking before you spend and take the right financial decisions, not in an impulse, but after thinking through very well. So with that, enjoy the romance that you have with your wallet. And that is what the finance. Thank you.